the cold, the silent promise of Mary that came through ages of old. This very moment is reaching to every sinner and saint, an invitation of mercy with just the littlest faith. before thee. Behold the light in the darkness, a babe from virgin womb, the King of heaven among us, with us, with us, Emmanuel. Merry Christmas and welcome to this celebration of our, the birth of our Savior, beautiful candlelight setting. Will you join me as we pray? Heavenly Father, it is a strange year, and yet we are privileged to gather around that which is most precious, most important, that which brings hope to our world. We gather around the birth of our Savior Jesus. Be with us now. Strengthen us and prepare us for the days ahead through this time of worship. 
In Jesus' name, amen. We have a God who has come to us in Jesus, and because of him, we can worship with joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. You know, God's word tells us that even as we worship with joy, we do so as people who are sinful. And yet the reason we have joy is that we have this promise, when we confess our sins, we have a God who forgives us of them. And so I'd invite you to join me in a time of reflection and confession. Heavenly Father, we worship you tonight as people who are called to bring praise to your name. And yet more often than not, we fall into sin. And so as we gather, we say we're sorry. We're sorry for, th for sins in our thoughts, in our words, and in our actions. Whatever sins we're struggling with in our lives, whatever sins have broken relationships with others, whatever sins grieve you, we take a moment of silence now to lay those before you. In Galatians 4, the Apostle Paul writes these amazing words. He says, For when the time had fully come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, to redeem us, to rescue us from our own sinful selves. You know, that's the promise of this celebration, that Christ came to this earth in a manger, and he died on a cross, and because of all that he has done, we stand forgiven in God's sight. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our scripture reading is the Christmas story, Luke 2, beginning at verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn.
the Christmas story continues in Luke chapter two, beginning at verse eight. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. Merry Christmas. I wanted to take this special time to have a message with the kids. And what I'm going to do is use one of my favorite books. It's called The Beginner's Bible. And I want to read the Christmas story from The Beginner's Bible. Now you can see where I'm sitting. This looks like a stable. And you notice that this is the manger where the animals fed. And so let's jump in to where baby Jesus is born. Mary and Joseph loved each other. Mary and Joseph were going to be married soon. Joseph lived in Nazareth, but his family lived in Bethlehem. Look at that beautiful picture of Mary and Joseph. You can tell they love each other, don't they? 
A new leader named Caesar ordered all people to go back to their homeland. He wanted to count all the people in his kingdom. So Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem. And you see, there's Joseph and Mary. And what's Mary on? Well, she's riding on a donkey. Mary was going to have her baby soon. When they arrived in Bethlehem, they looked for a safe place to sleep, but all the inns were full. And you can tell from Mary and Joseph, they're very surprised. And the innkeeper's saying, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Finally, a man was able to help them. He said, I do not have any rooms left, but you are welcome to sleep in the stable. Joseph made a warm place for Mary to rest. And while they were there, little baby Jesus was born. Oh, look at their holding baby Jesus. And you see there's a, a manger, a feeding trough, just like the one we have here. And I see the lamb and the kitten and the cow. Mary wrapped Jesus in strips of cloth and gently laid him in the manger. On the night when Jesus was born, shepherds were watching their sheep. Suddenly an angel stood before them and God's light shined all around. Look at the, the light is so bright the shepherds are covering their eyes. The angel said, do not be afraid. I bring joyful news to all people. Today in the town of Bethlehem, a Savior has been born. He's lying in a manger. Look at how happy that angel looks. Doesn't he look happy? Then a choir of angels appeared. They sang glory to God in the highest, peace and goodwill to everyone on earth. The shepherds rushed to Bethlehem. They found the baby Jesus and they told Mary and Joseph what the angel said. As they returned to their sheep, the shepherds told everyone what they had seen and heard. All along the way, the shepherds shouted praises to God. Those shepherds were so excited. They had seen the Savior, and they couldn't wait to tell everyone else that Jesus, the Savior of the world, was born. That's what we're celebrating, isn't it? Will you join me in an echo prayer? Dear God, thank you for your love, and thank you for sending baby Jesus to be our Savior. It's in his name that we pray, amen. to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay in fields where they they keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep no
thank you so much for being with us and celebrating the birth of not only the King of Israel, but really the King of the world. If you're a guest with us, we are glad that you're joining us for worship, that you're taking some time out of your busy holiday schedule to make this service a part of your tradition. And we'd love you to learn more about Concordia, all of our different ministries. Just go to the website, concordia.cc. I also wanna say thank you for your faithful support of this ministry. If you'd like to give to Concordia's ministries, you can give using the app. If you don't have it, you can just go to your favorite app store and download the Concordia app. You can also give using the Concordia website again. That's concordia.cc. As we continue our service, let's go to God in prayer. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for this incredible celebration of the birth of your son, Jesus. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for all that he has done for us, the hope that he gives to us. He was born into such a meager and humble circumstance, but he was born for us. He came for us because of his love for us. Father, we thank you that all of those promises are wrapped up in this one night. Father, whatever it is we bring to the service, Whatever it is we bring in our lives, we know that because of what Jesus has done, we don't walk alone. And we know that because of the price that Jesus has paid for our sin, there's no guilt that is too great. There's no shame that is too heavy that we can't lay it before the King of Israel. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what he's done, and it's in his name that we pray as together we pray the prayer that he's taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven.
Man, I love that song. It's a brand new song written by Adam and Dave Madden, and uh, it captures the essence of this crazy COVID-19 season and trying to celebrate Christmas in the midst of all of that, because there's so many things that are different, so many times and so many ways that we normally gather with other people that are shot. And yet what we gather around, what's most important, remains the same. At Christmas, for hope, for life, we gather around Jesus. You know, I was thinking about this Christmas season, thinking about this whole meaning, thinking about the stable and the manger, and it occurred to me it's a little bit like a mission trip. Now, I have to tell you, when I'm on mission trips, I love what I'm doing, I love the people that I'm serving, I love the purpose, I love the mission. But I'm not so crazy about most of the sleeping conditions. <laughs> uh, the beds aren't always comfortable. In fact, in Costa Rica, we slept on, on the mattresses on the ground. I, I remember in Ethiopia, some really uncomfortable spots to lay my head down for rest. Well, think about it like this. The God of the universe went on a mission trip. And on that mission trip, he checked into a hotel for 33 years. It wasn't comfortable. Uh, the mission trip, his surroundings were filled with anger and pain and even death. And it all began in a tiny little bed that was filled with hay. It was lumpy because it was actually a feeding trough, a manger. From Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 7. Mary brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. You know, in this brief devotional message, I want to, to sort of focus our hearts and our minds on two important things that, that we find when we look into that manger. And number one, when we look into the manger, the baby there calms our chaos. Now think about it. The Christmas story, if we think really about what's happening, we, we paint the idyllic picture, right? We sing these beautiful songs, but the, the picture that's really happening on that very first Christmas is chaotic. So the most powerful ruler in the world at that time, Caesar Augustus, orders that a census be taken. Everyone had to go to their ancestral hometown so they could be counted. But the reality is the timing of Caesar's decree was really bad for Mary because she was about to give birth. It was time. And yet she makes this trip with her husband. You know, when I think about that, I, I remember a time years ago when I was a pastor in Mount Prospect, and we had a, a, a very, very cold night, the coldest night of the year. I think the wind chill was like 36 below zero. But one of our families was having their third child, and lo and behold, time came. They had to head to the hospital. They took off. They were driving along, and the baby was actually born in the back seat of the car. Talk about chaos. When they arrived at the hospital, the, the husband was trying to explain to them that, that his wife was having a baby and that she was in the car, and they were trying to calm him down and say, sir, you're just a nervous father, it's all going to be okay, until he finally communicated that the mom, who had been pregnant, and the baby, who had been formerly inside the mom, was now in the car with the mom, and everything went crazy. I think that Bethlehem for Mary and Joseph was pretty much the same. It was chaotic. And I love the fact that we sing these beautiful songs. In fact, at the end of this service, we're going to sing Silent Night, Holy Night, All is Calm. <laughs> but I don't think it really was calm. I think it was crazy. And yet, do you remember what the shepherds announce, uh, pardon me, what the angels announce to the shepherds. Verse 14, glory to God in the highest and on earth in the midst of all of this chaos and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Right there in the feeding trough, God placed a gift that would bring peace to us. 
peace to our chaotic world. You know, I don't know if there's anyone in your life that, that is peaceful, that brings peace to your heart and to your mind, but if you've got somebody like that, you know that, that when you call them in the midst of, of chaos and trouble and upset, they have a way of talking you down. If you have one of those people in your life, maybe when you get to be with them, they have a way of just sort of making everything okay. They just take the, the stress out of life. They just bring the, the the noise and the anxiety, they bring that level way, way down so you can be peaceful. Dear friends, that's who Jesus is. That's who God sent him to be for us. He, God wants us to find, when we look into that manger, he wants us to find incredible peace. Not peace because everything's okay, peace because we know that that means our God is with us, our Savior is with us no matter what. He loves us no matter what. He accepts us no matter what. And no matter what the chaos, even a year like 2020 and COVID-19 and everything else that's happened, when we face that chaos, we face it with Jesus. And Jesus brings calm to our chaos. That's point number one. When we look into that manger, that baby calms our chaos. Point number two. When we look into that manger, the baby makes room for us. Verse 7 from Luke chapter 2 again. Mary brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was what? No room for them in the inn. The reason that Mary and Joseph end up giving birth in a stable with a manger as the, the nursery and the, the baby lying in that hay where animals normally feed is because there was no room for them anywhere. It seems awful, seems terrible, seems like the, the absolute worst possible nightmare. And yet I want to suggest to you that it works out perfectly. Here's why. You know, as the story goes on, that there were shepherds in that same country. They were out in the fields. They were taking care of their flocks. Now remember, these shepherds, they weren't the cream of the crop. They weren't the, the pillars of society. These were people who couldn't hold a job doing anything else. They were out there by themselves because nobody wanted to be around them. They weren't social creatures. They were outcasts. Many of them had very, very checkered pasts. And as they're out there in that field, an angel appears to them and says, Behold, I bring you good news of great joy. It says, Don't be afraid because I'm going to bring you such good news. I'm going to tell you of something so joyful and it is for all people, not the wealthy people, not just the, the famous people, not just the, the rich people. I'm bringing you something that is good news for all people. Born to you this day in the city of David is a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling claws and lying not in a hotel room, not in a palace room, you'll find him lying in a manger, the centerpiece of a stable. It says they came with haste. They, they took off. They ran. They couldn't believe that they were hearing this wonderful news. And they ran, and they found Mary, and they found Joseph, and they found the baby. Now think with me for just a minute. If Mary and Joseph had been staying in a hotel, would they have had access I doubt it. If they'd been staying in a palace, was there any way that these, these outcasts of society would have access to this baby? But Jesus was lying in a stable. His nursery was a stable, and the manger was his bed. And that meant they could come right there. They could walk right up. They could, they could look and see. They could take it in, and they could embrace this hope. Dear friends, what I love about this story is that because Jesus was born in a stable and resting in a manger, it means that he makes room for every single one of us. It doesn't matter who we are. It doesn't matter what we've done. It doesn't matter how much shame or guilt we have. He came to take care of all of us. He made room for everyone. You know, just one more thing that I'm thinking about. 
when I'm, uh, when I'm traveling back. In fact, I'm thinking specifically about when I'm coming back from Ethiopia. And we've been out in, in one of the smaller towns in Ethiopia working with pastors and, and doing the things that we do on those mission trips. And, and on the way home, we usually have to stay overnight. And again, it's not the most comfortable place in the world. And the food isn't great. But you know, on the way back, I really don't mind a lumpy bed. I really don't mind an uncomfortable mattress because I'm headed home. And I can't wait to get home. I want you to understand something. Jesus came and laid his head to rest in that manger. Uncomfortable as it may have been, inconvenient as, may, as it may have been, chaotic as it probably was. But he didn't mind because he was on his way to his real home, my heart and your heart. Dear friends, Jesus has made room for you and for me, for all of us. Let him give you peace. Let him calm your chaos in this chaotic time. Just ask him. Will you pray with me? Gracious Father, we are grateful for the love that you have for us, that you would send your Son on this mission trip, that he would endure all that he did for us, that he would bring peace and make room. Lord, I pray your blessing upon us as we move from this Christmas season to celebrate each and every day that because of Jesus, because he lay in that manger, we have hope, we have life, we have forgiveness. Bless us and strengthen us, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. And now, dear friends, receive this word of blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. And as you leave and as you head into whatever Christmas celebrations you might have this year, shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the message of Christmas. Jesus, Lord.